Hello and welcome to our information session on options for studying law in Canada at Osgood PD. This session is intended primarily for international students, people who would be applying for visas to come and study in Canada um, and have their first legal educational experience in Canada. But those who are newcomers to Canada and have not studied law in Canada before may also find this session helpful. I'm recording this session in March of 2022, so keep that in mind in terms of currency. Our current program options will always be available on our website at osgoodpd.ca. My name is Megan Thomas, and I'm the Director of Professional Graduate and International Programs at Osgood PD. And I'm really glad that you're joining me to learn more about why you might choose to study law in Canada and specifically at Osgood PD with us. So for those of you who are looking at different jurisdictional options, you might be considering studying in the US, in Australia, in the UK, for example. Um, we hope that you will seriously consider Canada as a favorable alternative to those jurisdictions. Uh, Canada has a great global reputation for being safe, uh, for being inclusive. Our community here in Toronto, where Osgood is located, is extremely diverse. Um, and we have a great culture for those coming from other countries. And we, of course, are a very large urban center, being the fourth largest city in North America and the largest city in Canada. Here at Osgood Hall Law School, of which Osgood PD is a part, we are the Os oldest law school in Canada. We have the largest graduate program in Canada, thanks to what we do at Osgood PD. Uh, we have a globally renowned faculty and a really large and vibrant student community of which you can be a part as an Osgood PD student. At Osgood Professional Development, we are unique in the Canadian landscape. We were formed about 25 years ago to focus on lifelong legal learning for lawyers, as well as for professionals who are not lawyers, but who have really significant contact with law and legal issues and risk in their professional lives. We have a location in downtown Toronto, right next to the Eaton Centre, which is a very large shopping centre in the heart of downtown, really close to the financial um, sector and many employment and other social and cultural opportunities here in downtown Toronto. We also have an office where our full-time programs are headquartered at Keele campus, which is the main campus of York University. And you'll see on this slide um, a photo of our location downtown. We are located at that corner of Young and Dundas streets and a lovely photo of the Osgoode Hall Law School building on Keele campus. So let's talk for a moment about who our students are. Um, here on this slide, you'll see photos of many of our students over the last few years. We have students coming from dozens of different jurisdictions. We currently have about 650 students in the professional LLM across many different specializations. And these students are typically either experienced lawyers and law graduates or experienced non-legal professionals, again, who have some contact with um, law and legal risk in their jobs. So there is an absolutely massive network of every kind of diversity among our students, professional, cultural, language, um, country of origin, simply, a variety that is unparalleled in Canadian law schools. And many of the photos that you're going to see in our presentation were taken at our Internationally Trained Lawyers Day, which is a day that we hold to celebrate the diversity of internationally trained talent here in Canada. Now, why would you want to choose us? So let's assume that I've convinced you that Canada is a good destination for study and you're looking at the options across Canada. Well, we have 
really excellent academic programs. Our professional LLMs, our graduate diplomas, and other programs for internationally trained lawyers have been specifically designed for you as an internationally trained lawyer. They've been designed at the graduate level. So we're not repurposing JD programs or putting you in JD classes or other undergraduate level classes. We've designed these programs specifically for you as someone who already has a law degree from another jurisdiction. Uh, we want to bring you in and benefit from the knowledge and experience you have. We are committed to having our classes be uh, high quality and interactive. And we have many, many years of satisfied alumni uh, to tell us that we are offering great programs and lots of variety for you to choose from. Secondly, we have a very big community here at Osgood PD, at Osgood Hall Law School and at York University that you can become a part of. And that includes not only the academic community, but also the broader legal community. Um, and many of the members of that community come in to take programs with us, to teach with us and to otherwise contribute. So when you're here, you will be immediately connected with many other people and have lots of opportunities for social events, for professional development, for career development, whatever you're looking for, you will find connections to that here. And finally, and I think most importantly, from my perspective as a graduate program director, we offer specialized support for our diverse student body. So whether you need academic support in your program, whether you need an appointment with our wellness counselor, whether you need resources on how to find a job after your program completes, or you're considering career transition, we offer all of these things. So our programs have been tailored over the years to provide introductory courses, uh, to provide resources and workshops, to provide websites that you can consult. And again, most importantly, lots of access to one-on-one -on -one advising and support to meet your specific needs as a student. So let's turn now to looking at our offerings. So we offer uh, programs of varying lengths and commitment levels. Our non-credit programs are specifically those for internationally trained lawyers, would be our summer school programs, which uh, run in the summer, give you a great opportunity to visit us here at Osgood PD, um, typically about three weeks in length. And they combine an academic experience with tourist activities, with social events, and professional networking. We have partnered with the York University English Language Institute to run a, a course on advanced legal English. That's a course that can help you if your proficiency level is just a bit low to be coming into a professional LLM, or perhaps you're looking simply for a boost to get you ready to enter the legal market here in Canada. We have a full-time in-person graduate diploma called the Graduate Diploma in Foundations of Canadian Law. That program starts every winter and is a great option for someone looking for a shorter academic program or a somewhat more um, slow paced introduction to the key concepts in Canadian common law. And finally, our full-time graduate programs, which are the professional LLM. We have four specializations that are available full-time, international business law, Canadian common law, taxation law, and general law. And I do want to mention as well that there is a full-time research LLM at Osgoode Hall Law School. It's run by a different department, but we are more than happy to uh, connect anyone who might be interested in that program with our colleagues in the Research Graduate Stream Office. So let's talk first about summer programs. We're running two different ones. They run concurrently. And uh, again, great options for people who want to visit us here in Toronto for a short time. Canadian business law and language is intended primarily for those coming from civil law jurisdictions who are looking for a boost on their legal language and are interested in the business law landscape here in Canada. 
governance through law is a program that will uh, appeal mostly to people from common law jurisdictions. We typically run a module on rule of law, as well as another module on something in the international governance area. That could be intellectual property, could be bankruptcy and sovereign debt, or some other topic of current interest. In 2022, our programs will run in July. Uh, deadline is coming up in April, although uh, given the fluctuating situation with COVID, we may be in a position to take some late applications. Please contact us if you'd like to apply. And we um, do have uh, a very simple application process that does require a little bit of information about your English language uh, proficiency level or your law degree. Next, Intensive Advanced Legal English. Um, this is a program that's available to people who have at least a 6.5 IELTS or equivalent language score. Typically run as a four month uh, full time program. And information about current offerings and intakes is available on the ULE website. Next, the Graduate Diploma in Foundations of Canadian Law. This is a great option, again, for people coming from uh, other jurisdictions, particularly civil law jurisdictions, where they may want to build a really solid foundation in common law concepts uh, before either thinking about entering the profession, um, possibly to take back to their home jurisdiction with some good knowledge of the Canadian system, or potentially as a first step in thinking about the accreditation process. Uh, this course gives you a great foundation in legal research, legal writing, private law, public law, and then some access to electives to take courses in your particular area of interest. The full-time offering of this program starts in winter. It's eight months long. And again, it does have 12 credits of required courses and six credits of electives that you would take in the summer, which is the second term of the program. Next, turning to full-time degree programs. So we have four specializations. They all work in a very similar manner, just different course offerings. Um, international business law, Canadian common law, tax law, and general law. The way our programs work is we typically have three, six, or nine credit courses, and it does take a total of 36 credits to complete the degree. Uh, Full-time programs are one year in length, although it is possible to take some breaks in the program if you wish. If you come in in fall and complete continuously, you would be done in summer. If you come in in winter, you would be completing the program in fall. In international business law, we really focus on a variety of courses in the business law area. We cover transactions, tax, arbitration, international trade. There's a lot of course options, so you can take the things that interest you the most. We take new students every fall and every winter. There are some foundational courses in the first term. The ones that are listed on the screen are the current ones. We do have a, a program change going through. And so those foundational courses will change as of winter 2023. Uh, but the rest of the program will operate in a very similar way. You'll take the majority of your courses from the international business law specialization. And then you'll have some space for electives if you'd like to go outside that specialization to satisfy some other interests or goals that you may have. Canadian Common Law is a program that specializes on the courses that you may need to satisfy subject matter requirements for the National Committee on Accreditation. So this is a program that's really focused on people who are heading toward licensing to practice here in Canada in one of our common law jurisdictions. Again, you would take at least half of your courses from uh, the Canadian Common Law Specialization and then have quite a bit of flexibility for electives if you choose to go that route. We do often impose some foundational course conditions for students coming into this program just to ensure your 
uh, success, but there's lots and lots of flexibility to tailor the program to meet your particular NCA requirements or take a combination of NCA requirements and um, electives. And this program takes new students every fall and every winter. Tax is a fall start program. Um, this is a, a really well recognized program um, with both a full time and a part time option, so you would be networking with professionals who are working in the field if you come into this program. Um, it's taught by academics and practitioners and you have access to a wide variety of electives in this program as well. The core of the program is really focused on corporate and international taxation. And uh, we have many happy graduates um, in the many years that this program has been running. And uh, great option for those who have some experience or a demonstrated interest and some previous study in the tax field. Finally, our last full time option is general law. And this is a program where you can customize your study by combining two to three specializations. So this is a program that meets the needs of people who say, you know what, I'm interested in a specialization, but um, I really need a bit more flexibility than a single specialization will give me. And so you would look for specializations where you have some experience or you have a specific goal in mind for study and create a study plan that's based on two or three of our listed specializations. We have different options for combining specializations in different academic years. And you can find the list of available specializations for any given intake on the general law specialization page on our website. If you're interested in general, we do very strongly recommend that you get in touch with us uh, for a bit of advising and discussion about your interests before you complete your application so that we can help you put together something that will work successfully for you. Uh, finally, a, a quick note about NCA assessments. So I mentioned NCA requirements in connection with our Canadian common law program. We do have another recorded session on how to practice law in Canada, and we're happy to give people information about uh, how to meet these requirements. Um, just quickly for those who may be new to the idea of practicing in Canada, anyone who's an internationally trained lawyer from any country outside Canada who wants to practice here needs to go through an NCA assessment. And there are always a number of subjects that any internationally trained lawyer must demonstrate competency in to become accredited to practice here in Canada. There are five mandatory subjects plus legal research and writing as of January 2022 and three core subjects. Typically, Everyone has to do the mandatory subjects. Those coming from non common law jurisdictions must do the core subjects and certain common law candidates also have to do the core subjects. Um, there are also additional subjects that candidates with a shorter than typical law degree or a shorter um, university education may have to do. And um, what we recommend is that you use the self-assessment tool on the NCA's website if you don't have your assessment yet to try to predict what your requirements might look like. Again, I also certainly recommend watching our recorded session or attending one of our information sessions on practicing law in Canada in order to get more information about how to tackle that process. How you would complete your requirements for the NCA through one of our programs. Um, our full-time programs offer a number of different subjects that you can take toward your NCA requirements, anywhere between one and eight subjects. So thinking about what your timeline might be, what your goals might be, which of these programs will offer you the most value in terms of your career trajectory. Um, factor in the NCA requirements if you are on a licensing pathway, um, but they certainly are not the only consideration to keep in mind. Thinking about that, um, 
depending on how many NCA requirements you have, you may be thinking about moving through licensing very quickly, in which case you might be looking for a program that gives you additional access to NCA requirements. Alternatively, you may be considering a non-practicing role or taking the accreditation and licensing process a bit more slowly. That can be a very successful approach for international candidates to get them introduced to the market, to get them some additional work experience in their field, in which case a specialization other than Canadian common law might be a bit more helpful. Um, but we do consider all of these factors when we're advising candidates um, and typically um, something that relates to your previous area of work as well as your goals in the future is going to be your best option in terms of programs that will give you the most value. Talking about the financial aspect of things, the tuition for our professional LLM for visa candidates is currently just over $40,000. That's a program fee. It's billed in equal installments in each term. The graduate diploma, approximately $17,000. The tuition for our programs does get updated each year when the university approves fees. And so it's important to be checking uh, for the current information each year. We're really happy to let you know that for those of you who are visa candidates applying for a full-time professional LLM, we have two new entrance awards. We have some earlier application deadlines uh, for these awards for each intake. The award of merit is available for applications for those who have at least two years of uh, post-law degree professional legal experience. That's a $10,000 award. And our larger award, the Award of Excellence for 30,000 is open for applications for those with at least five years of experience. If we've convinced you that Osgood PD may be the right place for you to pursue your studies, the next step will be planning for application, um, making note of important dates that are coming up, particularly if you're looking at applying for an entrance award those application deadlines are quite early. Um, we have a number of required documents. Typically, electronic documents are perfectly acceptable for the purposes of application, so that makes your life a bit easier. Um, you can consult our website for a list of documents that are necessary for application. And also thinking about whether you'd like to work with one of our recruitment agencies. Uh, we currently have agents in China, in Nigeria, India, and Pakistan, in the Caribbean and Latin America. And working with an agent can be helpful um, in terms of giving you strategy for your application or helping you with your documents. So that's something we would encourage you to think about if you are an international student looking to apply. So important dates um, are applications for fall programs, always open in October. That awards deadline is January 15th and final deadline May 1st. And for winter, we open applications in February, awards deadline April 15th and the final deadline September 15th. What we're looking for in your application, um, a CV or, or resume that gives us information about your legal work experience, a writing sample so that we can take a look at your writing ability and analytical ability. And this is particularly important if your first language is in English, we'll be looking for uh, writing proficiency as well. We'll be looking for transcripts for any university you've attended where you've received grades. Um, your grade point average will be calculated based on your law degree. And we are looking for an overall B or equivalent. Not to worry, we do understand the differences in grading among different jurisdictions. Um, and so those of you coming from a jurisdiction where grading is less generous, uh, we do make allowances for that in the process. And also the older your um, education is, if we're looking at a law degree that's five years or more in the past, we'll be looking much more at your work experience to decide whether you're competitive for the program. 
you will need two references for your application. Um, we'll be looking for people who can speak to your potential to do well and complete the program. And those can be academic or professional references at your choice. And for many of our candidates, we do require language testing. The information on who requires those is available on our website or by inquiring to admissions. So in closing, I want to encourage all of you to take a little bit of time to look at our many options to choose what's best for you. Um, we are here to help if you need some more individual advising or information. And we always recommend that your first contact be with us through email at our recruitment email address. If you'd like to set up a time to talk, we're happy to do that. Just ask for that in the email. If you've started an application and you need some help or have a question, we recommend contacting us through our application portal. That will allow us to link right back into your uh, application and give us ready access to your information. So thank you. I hope you found this information helpful in making some decisions about your study plans for the future. And we hope to see many of your applications uh, down the road. Thank you very much.